Hi, how are you doing? So welcome to this week's One Image My Edit. So this week I am going to be showing you how to create moody and dramatic black and white portraits using Photoshop. So we're going to create something that is similar to this. So you can see there, that's what I've done. I've just created something that's quite dramatic. And to do this, we use calculations. So I'm going to just start again so I can walk you through what I've done. So the first thing you want to do then is open up your image and then just come up to image and then come to calculations. And what this is going to do is create a new channel. So what we can do is we've got source one and source two and we can come up to the first one, source one, and we can change what we want that channel to be. So we could have it red, green or blue. And it really depends on what kind of effect and what mood you want to create. So let's go to the source two and we can select a green, which would be brighter and a red, which would be even more brighter. So I'm going to go with blue and I'm going to go with green. So that would give me quite a dark image. We can also change the blend mode and you can see all the different uh, effects you can get. Some of them won't work, but some of them will. And it really comes down to whatever you want the image to look like. So I'm going to I'm going to leave mine on multiply because I quite like that. I think that's quite good. And you can also change the opacity. If you hold if you hold the command or control key down, you can you can get these two little arrows that appear and then you can just slide your your mouse or your pen either left or right to just really give that a more dramatic effect. So I'm just going to drop this down to about 70 percent. And then with results, we want new channel. So then press OK. And then if we come to the channels, which is up here, you can see that we've now got alpha channel. So that's the one that we've just created using calculations. So what we want to do is copy and paste this into our uh, layers so that we, we can then make further adjustments to it. So it's really easy. You just want to select it. So control or command A to select it all and then control or command C to copy it all and then come to your layers. And then we want to create a new layer. So we come down to the very bottom. We've got the square with the plus sign. Click on that. That's our new layer. And we're just going to paste it. So control or command V. So let's do that. There we go. So we've now got our new layer on top of our colored layer there. So now we can make adjustments to it. That's why we paste it. So let's come down to the bottom and let's make a curve adjustment. So let's go to under curves and let's click on the white area here, the white section down here. And let's just push that in because that is just going to give us a real nice dramatic adjustment to the shot. There we go. We could do the same on the blacks if you wanted to, and that would just bring the blacks in a little bit. So now we've done that, we can click on the three main points here. And that means we can now isolate. So we can isolate the white. So you can see what's happening there. It's just the highlights being affected. We can adjust the midtone. So just the grays that are being affected. And then the blacks are just being affected there. And you can come back to this at any time. So you click on the X here. That just closes it down. It doesn't mean delete it. There is the adjustment. So you can see that's what that curve adjustment has done. And if you want to come back to it, just click on the little square there and then you can come and tweak this again after. So that's looking pretty good. Let's come down to the bottom and let's make a levels adjustment. And again, we can affect the blacks, we can affect just the whites, and we can affect the grays. And we can also tell Photoshop that we actually want the whites to start down here. So if you look, this is pure white, we can actually say, well, let's just take the sting out of the white a little bit. Let's push that in and that looks pretty good. Let's click on the X. OK, so now let's make this a little bit more dramatic. So we're going to focus on the eyes now. So let me just zoom in and use the space bar just to bring the hand up and then we can move it around. So let's come down to the bottom and let's make another curves adjustment. And this time I'm just going to click in the middle and push up. And again, you can come back to this. So it doesn't matter how far you push that. Click on the X button and that will get rid of it. So now you can see at the top here, it says curves two and it's a white 
layer mask there. So what we want to do is we want to invert that because we don't want to see the adjustment. So press Control or Command I and that will invert it. And it's now gone black. If we now go to our brush tool, so you can either press B on your keyboard or come over to the brush tool there. Come to the top here, make sure it's a soft round brush. So that would just be in your general brushes folder there. Um, make sure the hardness is at zero. Drop the opacity to yeah about 70%, something around there. Uh, most importantly, make sure that your foreground color is white. And to do that, you can press the X key and that will toggle through the different colors you can see there. So we need to make sure that it is white. So now what I'm going to do is just paint in the effect. So what we're doing is revealing that curve adjustment that we made a minute ago. So let's just do that around the eyes there. In fact, I'm going to push this up to 100% because I think it needs to be 100%. There we go. So just paint that in. And if you make a mistake, just press Control or Command Z or Z for my American friends and go to the opacity now and just bring this down to around 40%. In fact, no, let's bring it down to around 25, 30%. And what we're going to do now is just whiten the whites of the eyes a little bit. And down here as well where the tear ducts are and of course round here where the eyelashes are because that's really important when you're trying to bring an eye out but what you don't want to do is whiten the eye too much otherwise it will look too false so just bring around the eyelashes where the tear duct is at the top there and i think that is good so if we look up here we can see on the um, layer mask there it's got two white dots you can actually see uh, where the eyes are poking through so if i take that away you can see that's that's basically what we've just done OK, now if we make a mistake, all we have to do is come back over here, select the black. So just click on the arrows and then we can just paint back in any areas that we that we uh, want to change or we want to make a little bit darker. So you can really refine it. So if we zoom out, you can see there that effect is quite dramatic. And again, if we come to the curves adjustments, so double click on there, we can now really decide how much of this we want to adjust so we can always come back to it and this is non-destructive workflow okay so i think somewhere around there that's good okay so next thing then let's click on our layer one there and let's do some dodge and burning so if you come over to the tools here you've got dodge and burn you can press o on your keyboard and that will bring it up so you've got dodge and you've got burn. So your dodge, if you come up to the top again, um, we just want to make sure the brush is 0%. So that still means it's going to do something. It just means it's, it's very, very, very soft when it's 0%. And what you can do is you can target specific areas. So it could be either the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. So the blacks, the grays, or the whites. So let's go with the highlights so the whites and we can see we've got the exposure here so we can change that now if i just quickly go over his eye you'll see there what that's doing that is just brightening the eyes up so if i go to the history panel you can see what that's done but it's only going to be affecting the highlights so let's change this to the midtones bring the exposure down to around 40 percent and make the brush smaller by using the bracket keys and let's just go around the eyes so I mean, all I'm doing is just lightening the midtones, so the greys within that area of the eye. So again, this is just going to help us add a little bit more contrast. Okay, so that's given us a nice bright area to 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 work with. Now let's change this then to the burn tool. So the burn tool is going to help us darken areas. So again, the exposure 20, 25 percent, and let's go this time with the shadow so we want to try and darken some areas so if i click you'll be able to see there what what that's doing it's just darkening them areas there all right in fact i'm going to drop this right down to around five percent so i'm just going to darken some of these areas here where it's naturally dark so i'm just going over some of the shadow areas and 
I think that's pretty good. It's going to go across the lips here, maybe across the chin where the hair is across there. So let's now do the mid-tone, so the gray area. So again, what we can now do is just work on some of the areas that could do with some darkening. So like around the cheekbones, you can see here, the light is kind of just falling on there. So that looks quite good. Let's just zoom in. Yep, that looks pretty good. So again, some of the moustache there and the, the beard, it's gonna darken some of them areas and some of the areas across the lips here. Okay, and finally, let's go to the highlights. So what we can now do is just darken some of these highlights, just to take that shine off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's jump back to the dodge tool and let's go to highlights. And now what I wanna do is just pick out some of the white areas on the beard. So you can see here, I'm just picking out and you can probably see they're just starting to pop out a little bit. So again, that's just helping bring some detail out. Um, we can also just drop that exposure. We can lighten some of the lips as well. You can see there, look what we're doing, just bringing some of that sheen back, which can look quite nice. Um, if you, Again, if you make a mistake, just press the, the Z key and you'll be taken back. And again, bringing the exposure down, it's all about that, just bringing that exposure down. So let's just go over the pupils one last time there. That's looking pretty good. Maybe just bring some detail out up here. And just a little bit more, I think, around the beard because that is quite interesting and it pulls your eye into the shot quite a bit. And then also, I think finally, this section here of the hair you can see that there is actually some nice light hitting that. So if we just bring that out a little bit, that is going to pull our eyes into his eyes. It's going to bring your attention to, into his eyes there. So let's just do that there. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I would do is go to the spot healing brush tool and just look for anywhere that we think might, might need cleaning up. So around here, um, there we go. So just take out some of the imperfections there. I'm going to leave his paws as it is. I'm not going to soften that or anything, but I'm just going to tidy up anywhere that I think just needs uh, a, a little bit of attention. But with male portraits, it's usually not a lot. A little bit of a line here where the light is kind of just, oh, command Z, let's go back. Yeah, a little bit of a line there. Maybe take out these here because uh, take out just some of the hairs around here just to tidy that up, I think. Again, totally up to you. You could leave that if you wanted to. Um, I think that's just a good idea. There's a little bit of a line here as well. There we go. And I think that's just, yeah, that's just hair coming across there. Uh, but actually, I think that looks a little bit distracting. So it's just Let's just address that. There we go. And just these little areas here. So again, it's just a case of now just scanning the image, looking for bits that just pop out. And again, you know, you can spend a lot longer than what I am. It's got a couple of eyelashes in there as well. Um, but I think that is, yeah, that is good. So, okay. So then I think to finish it off, uh, I would certainly think about cropping this possibly to a square. Um, but um, yeah, maybe maybe a square, but I think if we if we have full control, we can kind of just decide what we want. Um, but I think yeah, I think a square would would definitely work there. And we could just line that up with the eyes, you can see what I'm doing there with them. Uh, then grids, just lining that up. Maybe just come a little bit out if we wanted to, but yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, entirely up to you, entirely up to you. So I think if we, if we just have the original ratio, we can then just decide, just have that a little bit, a little bit wider maybe. 
something like that there. So just having them cross points on the eyes, I think that works really, really well. Um, I would probably then just to finish it off, just because I think these are quite distracting, just using the clone tool there, and just clone out the edges there because I think they, your eye just wanders off out of the shot there, out of the frame. So yeah, I mean, that will do. You, your eye would not notice that as an adjustment. So if I press F on the keyboard, that just gives us a nice full frame. You can see what we've got there. Um, so yeah, I think that works. I'd pr I would probably actually go in for a square, maybe crop off that top area there. So it is more of a, um, more of a, a face shot, so to speak. I think that that would work well actually um, yeah it would yeah it really would wouldn't it so let's just do that and the good thing is as well is that if we click on the at the top here where it says content aware if we do that what Photoshop will do is kind of fill in any of the pieces that is not there in the shot but on this image it's just black so it shouldn't it shouldn't really hear a need to do anything um, but that is uh, a good new new feature that's that's really good. It just fills in the areas there, and you can see what that's done. It's just expanded them bits there. So with that, um, yeah, I would I would then maybe think about okay, let's just get the brush tool, select black, and let's just let's just paint that in. So we can just bring that opacity up. Let's just get rid of that hood. There we go, and now we've got a lovely a lovely square crop. Let's just darken the edges there just to make it a little bit more dramatic. So if you look there, that's that would be the final shot. And I think that looks really nice. I think it looks really, really good. Um, it's just a, a, a really nice way of, of doing black and white images in, in Photoshop. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Let's just click on the camera here and you can see. Um, so that was the original. And then we've gone in and we've created a, a very, very dramatic portrait there. So yeah, I think that works well. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, and I look forward to seeing your images. See you on the next one.